Hello everybody, welcome to one of my videos. Tonight we're playing on Amiga. As you can see by the screen, we are playing the Adams Family. They're creaky, they're kooky, they're ooky, and they're spooky. And this is a great game. I completed it a couple of times in the past, but it's time to do a long play. And it's Jamie from Morgan's Games, Adams Family, Amiga. Let's go. Okay, this is the start of the game. This is Adams Family on the Amiga. The Adams Family is a platform game based on the 991 movie of the same name. Released by Ocean Software in 993, the game was released for the Sega Master System, TurboGrafx-16, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Amiga, and Atari ST. And we play as Gomez Adams. And we start the game with five lives and two hearts. Hearts are energy in this game. And even though this is extremely early in the game, this is a boss battle. It's a bird. This bird will lay eggs. Every time you hit by an egg, you lose your energy. However, when you defeat this boss, we will be rewarded with an extended heart. And for a game of this difficulty, you're going to want as much energy as you can get. So, your character doesn't have any weapons. All he has is a walking, jumping and crouching situation. Jumping on enemies' heads is how we drain their energy. Here we go. We kill him, he explodes, and we have lots and lots of hearts. Unfortunately, we're not gaining those many hearts, we gain one heart. Heart, power, access code, and one, J, one, and N. There we go. We're off the mark on the heart front. So now we have an extended heart. Now we can take three hits. There we go. This is a good game. A really, really good game. However, we've got a lot to do. So let's go through the door. We're off the mark. Okay, at the moment, Gomez, you have three hearts. You have two more more than I do. Let's go get a fourth. Now this fourth heart can be found in a very, very cold place indeed. However, we're not done yet. We've got a few more enemies to deal with. We have kettles, we have goldfish bowls, legs, and we have birds. Kill an enemy by jumping on their heads. We find that they have spikes on top of their heads. And that gives you 100 points. Now enemies close together, you can kill multiple enemies, but sometimes that will actually harm you. One of the flaws of this game, hit the A with your head. This leads to a deep freeze where a cold but not heartless man lurks. That man... It's a snowman, and he appears in this level. Defeat him, who is no easy task, and you get another heart. And then we're going to start rescuing members of the family. But first, we will get this token, which actually makes you invincible. Now, Ocean released other versions of the game for other platforms featuring gameplay and levels. One version released for the NES and Sega Game Gear was later ported to Acclaim Entertainment. The third was produced for the Game Boy, and the fourth was for Amstrad, CPC, Commodore 64, and ZX Spectrum home computers. All versions controls Gomez Adams as he attempts to rescue members of the Adams family. At the moment, Gomez, you are a killing machine, but then we are invincible. So just walk into the enemy and you just kill them with a the sound of a pop. However, you don't earn any points this way. But at least we're staying alive. Now it makes a ticking sound, that tells you it's gonna run out. Now Gomez Adams is very well known for his sliding around. However, being on snow and ice, he slides even more, which you can expect that. Which makes this level incredibly different indeed. Now jumping, in a game like this, I've always preferred jumping to be up on the joystick. However, not here, it's fire button. The longer you hold a fire button, the higher it jumps. But, this level has a flaw, because not only are there spikes on the ground, there's spikes on the ceiling. So jumping too high, you'll be impaled for the head. Now I've always preferred up to be jump. But then people using control pads would probably prefer a button to be jump. But then I don't like control pads. Now, as we progress through this game, you'll see these tokens, which are dollar symbols. Pick up 25, and it rewards you with a lost heart. And also, if you collect 100 of them, that will give you an extra, extra life. However, hearts and lives can be picked up throughout the game as well, but most of the time, extra uh, lives can be found in secret areas. Now, you can use enemies to reach areas you couldn't reach with a normal jump. Some of these jumps do test this absolute jumping limit. But when you jump onto an enemy, you can hold the fire button down to get to higher areas, but again, don't hold it down for too long and get stabbed through the brain. Now this game is very, very long. I'm going to edit it down as much as I can because there might be a few deaths here. You have been foiled in your attempt to rescue your family, however, you still have a chance. So we restart here. Health is restored, but we're now down to four lives. 
once you get this fourth life heart, I should be all right. Right. This level is difficult to master without sliding. Once he starts to slide, it's difficult to stop him. There you go, that's a combo. Brought it up to 400 points there. Now the levels in this game are rather long. This one's not too bad in terms of length. This is a very, very difficult level to have at the very start of the game. However, you can do the levels in any order you like. And I have tried rescuing members of the family with just two hearts. It's a very, very difficult task indeed. Right. Wait patiently. And it counts. Right, we have 37 and 4 lights. There we go. We need some more hearts. Right, now we have rolling snowball heads. Now those you can't kill, they're too big. Even though the boss is a big snowman. Right, we have another heart. It's maxed out. Now I've never actually got past this level without dying. So I've failed already. This is a good effort. Another heart. I'm not going to risk collecting everything in case it takes a hit. We'll just run straight into a snowman's head. However, this level does have a few more hearts to pick up. I feel like I get away with that. Now, I have got some, lots and lots of statistics to read about this game, but let's get past this very, very difficult level, get that extra heart, and then we'll go for it. However, this game does have unlimited continues. This is very, very nice of Ocean. There we go, one, two, and also we have a, a sneaker, or a trainer. And that'll make you run even faster. Which on snow and ice is a bad thing. But it does work as another hit, which I didn't realise, but it does. So we need to take another hit, and hopefully we don't. We'll lose our shoe, but we do stay alive. Now I've actually got to the boss with the sneaker, and I found already. But we didn't take a hit. Well, we took a hit, but we didn't lose our heart because of it. We're very, very close to the boss. That was a bad move. Ugh. Don't have to kill everything. Right, we have another heart. Right. Small jump, drop. Ooh. Survived, just. Right, we're not far away from the boss. Few more enemies to contend with. Can I get another heart? Boom boom pow! Can I keep it? That's the question. Yes. This is brilliant. Right, best go ever. Right, hit the A. A cold man could make things hot, but take heart. Right, boss battle. We have four lives, but full energy. It is a snowman. Difficult. Very difficult. Nice, nice baby! I like that! Boom, boom, pow! And we've got lots of hearts! We have a heart power up! There we go, there is the code, which I'm going to take a picture of my phone. However, I left it in the kitchen. I don't have enough plug sockets. Trouble is, everything's been taken up by lights, cameras, and action. But then you could write it down, but then I'm always losing my pens. Okay, we're not done yet, because sometimes these levels do award you with a little bit more rewards. So on we go. However, this one doesn't. Oh. There we go, we're through. Okay, because we do the levels in any order we like, we're going to go right up to the top of the mansion and rescue Pugsley. Welcome to the Pugsley stage, my favourite level in the game and the first level I played due to issue 33 of CU Mega. A massive creaky cookie level from Ocean's Blockbuster License. Right, a lot to see, a lot to do, and a lot to avoid. Now, Pugsy is depicted as the devious young genius in Charles Adams' original cartoons. He's often shown releasing sailboats in the park with other children, except his boats were more macabre in nature. Now, this level has lots of secrets. Secrets that provide you with extra lives. And speaking of lives, you might notice over the course of this video that my lives and my score are going up and down like a yo-yo. This is due to mistakes. Not much in terms of gameplay, 
but when reading statistics. I like to read statistics while doing these videos. Every time I make a mistake, I'm going back and reloading and using the original password. But when you do that, that takes away your score and it puts your life back to the basics. And I'm not cheating! But it is making it more difficult for me, because any extended lives I'm getting, I then go back to five. Right, enemies are shooting blades from their mouth. We have lots of killer teams here. Avoid those. Now these blades are very similar to Bowser's Castle's weapons in Mario Brothers. The only difference here is they are blades, he's for fire, but they're both deadly. Now Gomez can also crouch, which you do need quite a lot here, to avoid getting hit in the face by a great blade. Now, cannonballs get shot from cannons, however, you can use them to your advantage. You can jump on the bullets. Jump on them. Wouldn't do it in real life. However, it hits you anywhere else, that is a painful experience. But at the moment, we have full energy. Now, sometimes you have to use these to get to areas you can't reach, like that. And this will take us to our first secret. Now, Pugsy is the oldest child. He is a preteen boy who is almost always seen wearing a striped t-shirt and shorts. First appeared in Charles Adams' cartoon, The New Yorker, during the 1930s. In all incarnations, he is overweight. In television series, Pugsy usually eats over five pieces of birthday cake at birthday parties. That's a lot of cake. And this is a lot of springs. I'm not a big fan of springs in side-scrolling platformers, but they do play quite a big part here. Now these weapons that are swinging will hurt you, but you have to jump through the chains. Right. Oh, it does make a comical sound. Not many enemies in this level. It just hazards. Right. And of course, you can't have a level without spikes. The ocean could have been so more meaner, they could have included instant kills when you landed spikes. I'm so glad they didn't. Some good time jumps. Go. That enemy is shooting a blade from his mouth. With one hit will sort him out. Right, we have bombs. They explode and watch out for the debris. But if you go off the screen and go back on, they do actually respawn. Right, Pugsy is an energetic monster of boy. Blonde red hair, popped blue eyes, and a dedicated troublemaker. Well, we've got to rescue him. Right, like, jump through the chain. More enemies, but don't hit twice. Don't hit two at once. That will hurt you. What are the fours? Right. If possible, jump on the top. There we go. And I got an extra points for doing that. More cannonballs. Been shot from cannons. Another secret. Jump on the door and press up. Now, Pugsy is genius in his ways. He makes toy guillotines, full-size racks, threatens to poison his sister, and he can turn himself into Mr. Hyde with an ordinary chemical set. Right. In 1991 film, Pugsy was played by Jimmy Workman. He works... Sorry, he acts as an unwitting accomplice to his sister, Wednesday, who makes attempts to commit legal harm upon him, although he has returned the favour on occasions. Right, not a big room this one, but there's a lot of dangers here. In the Adams family, Pugsy and Wednesday open a lemonade stand, but their drinks are toxic and cause Lurch to spit fire when he drinks it. Right, more blades. Avoid the blades. There's a heart up there, but it's quite risky to get, but I'm going to risk it anyway because I do need it. Now imagine this game, or this level, with just the one... Sorry, two hearts. That would be a really, really difficult experience. I have done it before, but it's difficult. Four is a lot easier. Right, I've had two attempts. Let's go for a third attempt. Third and final. No. Leave it, Jamie. Leave it. More cannons. More cannons shooting cannonballs. Now also, when you have to use a password, not only do your life get taken away and your score is taken away, also your tokens are taken away. But 25 tokens rewards you with a heart, and 100 gives you a life. That is going to hurt. It's never going to feel that in the morning. Right, I've got some crucial jumps here. And this one's even more difficult, because we'll try and get it on the screen first. Lovely jubbly! 
Right, 36. Might better get another heart here. With the help of enemies. There we go. The sound confirmed it. The heart confirmed it. There we go. I'm not going to get all of them. Another secret. This one also rewards you with another life. There is a secret area. You should go through the wall. There we go. I love the sound effects to it. 60 we have. And we have three hearts and seven lives. Go in the door before the bomb explodes. Boss time! And Pugsy is there at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to hit him on the head. His bar is on the right. Mine is on the left. Now this is very, very trial and error. I can't remember where all the bullets go. But there we go. Another death. Okay, let's go again. One, two, three, four, five, six hits. I take four. And some good time jumps. I'm not 100% sure what area is your safe. It's very, very trial and error. But when you hit him, he does flash. And that does actually prevent you from taking the hit for that brief time. Even his bullets flash. There we go. Pow. But father, I was working on a new poison for Wednesday with the wacky scientist. There is another code. V1J1C. Okay, we're here again, but now the platform beneath us has opened up. Now we go through this tube. And we're rewarded with more tokens. I missed one. There's always one that gets away. Two that gets away. Here we go. And we could go back in, but let's go through the door. There we go, Pugsy has been rescued. Okay, this is the piano room. This is where any rescued family members are then found. Now, Lurch and Thing are the only ones that don't get captured in this game. But when you've rescued all of them, apart from Morticia, this door will open up and take you to the final level. But until then, let's go and find another one. Okay, next person to rescue, we're going to go for Uncle Fester this time. Okay, time to rescue Uncle Fester. He came this way earlier with Abigail. Now, Fester, also known as Uncle Fester, was played by Jackie Coogan in the original television series, Crystal Lloyd in the two feature films, and Nick Kroll in 2019's animated feature, and Patrick Thomas in Adam's Family Reunion. Now, this is a difficult level, again. However, there's an enemy on this level, which I'm certain is G.I. Ant. For those of you who don't know who G.I. Ant is, he is an ant that features in the game Pushover. Which is another game which is done by Ocean Software. I have long played it. Long played it is on my channel. Very, very difficult game indeed because it has 100 levels, which I've done in one day. So, in that game, as you know, he is a good guy. He's an ant, a very, very small ant, and he's a good playable character, doing a lot of work for Mr. Colin Curley, saving and rescuing his Quavers by pushing dominoes. However, here, as you can see, he's on a unicycle. So now, he's no longer a good guy. He's an evil guy. He's on the dark side. However, it's the same size as me, but he doesn't have a moustache. But there's a lot more of him. There we go. Anyway, you have a nice pair of white sneakers. Use it to run faster, use it to jump faster and further. One hit and you lose your shoes. Right, we have a secret. Right, go through the door and it puts us into the dark. No enemies here apart from the spikes. We have got the opportunity to get a lot more tokens. Which help towards our mice. Now you get an extra life when you get to 50,000 points. Right, avoid the maces, you'll be hit in the face by a mace. Now these knights are the most difficult enemy in this level by an absolute long shot. I just lost my shoes. Because they throw weapons, a bit similar to that enemy in the last level, but this time they are swords, and they do come back, a bit like a boomerang. You'll be hit by a boomerang sword thrown by a knight. However, when he turns his back on you, he doesn't shoot. So that's the time you need to pounce. He is quite a fast character. Now these beer skin rugs will shoot teddy bears from their mouth. However, you can use them to advantages by getting to higher areas. A bit like those cannonballs. We've got to get rid of these knights. And there's G.I. Ant with his unicycle. And I got hit by a sword. So I replenished it immediately. Perfect heart placements. Now you can crouch and dodge the swords. Also, when you kill them, if they've already thrown their weapon, it will come back. 
even though they're already dead. You'll be killed by a sword that's been thrown by an enemy that you've already killed. Right, this looks like a bar of chocolate. Hit the button to get rid of the bar of chocolate, even though it looks quite nice to eat. Another knight, another bear, bear skin rug. Right, and of course, we've got more spikes, not only on the bottom, but also on the top. This is a big mansion, a big house. Lots of dangers and lots and lots of spikes. Go, Mage, you've got a lot of work to do. Now, Uncle Festa is a completely hairless, hunched and barrel-shaped man with dark, sunken eyes and, is, and often has a deranged smile. He always wears a heavy, full-length fur coat. Now, Festa has a strange ability to generate electricity. He would often demonstrate this by putting a light bulb in his mouth, which would then illuminate. He also claims that he possesses 110 volts of power in one episode of the sitcom. Right, ghosts and GI ant lookalikes. Right, so this is a combination of buttons. I don't know what the right combination is. But if you do it right, it opens up another section. Not sure what it is though, but anyway, I'll just take a wild guess. That's all I can do. Right, avoid the grandfather clocks. This level has a lot of time, a lot of clocks, but unfortunately they're all wrong. Right, we need the help of that and another showboating ant. Right, again, crouching is very much needed here. Now if you get that combination correct, this next bit, which will be here soon, you better go down, but as you can see, it's blocked. It's blocked by a bar of chocolate, so I got the combination wrong. One day I might get it right. Avoid getting hit in the face by a clock, and avoid the colourful fly, and avoid the ghost. Right. Now, of course, Festa is Gomez's brother. And there's another GI ant. Ant heart, I can get it. Yes, I got it. Oh, that's well. oh and I lost it again. Combos! Now, not all enemies on this level shoot. The ones that do are the worst. Now, I'm going to try not and collect absolutely everything, because that's too risky. It's probably going to result in me taking a hit or two. I'm going to try and stay alive. Right, guillotines and knights. Not a nice combination, but then what is a nice combination? However, Pugsy is very, very impressed with these guillotines, because he makes them... He makes small toy versions out of them. Okay, and he uses them to cut the heads off Wednesday's dolls. Wednesday is his sister. Right. Kill those knights very, very quickly. Now one of these bare skin rugs, later on, you have to go inside its mouth, and that is another secret. Right, avoid the swigging mace. We have failed. However, we've got another shoot. So we can take another hit, which is good because one hit I would have died. So thank you to the shoes. It's got to be the shoes, right? It is indeed. We run a lot faster with this. Right. One more hit and I'm a dead man. Now Uncle Festa has severe migraines, but he appears to enjoy them. However, he relieves his migraines by placing his head in a large screw press and tightening it to the levels that normal people would not be able to withstand. He loves it. Right, we need some serious energy. Now, despite Uncle Fester's menacing look and bizarre behaviour, he's a gentle and caring to everyone, and he shows a lot of respect to Gomez and Morticia. Right, now this is a difficult section once again, however, we've got to get rid of some of these flies. Over here, we get our fez, which is a hat. But it's not your normal hat, because it has a helicopter blade on the top. Now, pressing the fire button will allow you to fly. Now, we're going to go back, because we want to find a secret. But when you go onto another screen, your hat will start to flash. And when it starts to flash, it disappears. However, we don't want it to go just yet, because over here is some secrets. Very, very important secrets. Life-saving secrets. There is a shoe. There is a life. There is a heart. And I'm invincible. You are a killing machine now. Go for it. Now we are playing with power. Oh, we want another hat. Now we're playing with power and flight. 
Now this is good because this is a very, very difficult section to do without this power-up. Don't mean this doesn't have many power-ups in this game. It's not his fault. But he does have a moustache. It's false. Now, of course, the second Adam's family feel there was a baby, and he had a massage as well. So once again, we're killing everything, with the result of sounding. There we go. We don't earn any points that way. Right, it's gonna run out. Sound confirmed this. Right. Now we use the teddy bears to get to areas we can't reach. There is a button. If you want to get the extra life, use the teddy bears. That you don't hear every day. We have a life. Seven lives, four hearts, and 61 dollar symbols. I've still got more statistics to read, but this is quite a difficult level to do, and read statistics. More maces. They love their maces. What's terrible, when you avoid one thing, then you hit by another. Like those knights. Classic example. Right, here is the one we go in its mouth. Which takes us to another secret. Four one-ups and a knife. Life is at ten. Hearts are maximum. Some of these jumps really do test his jumping limit. Now he doesn't have many skills, but jumping is all he's got. Right, this area has no ground. It looks like we're actually in a pit right now, but we're not. We're safe and sound. Safe and sound, but no ground. Right, lots and lots and lots of showboat and GI ants. Right. What going on? Right, a big, big jump here. Which I very rarely do. I did it. Nice. And I avoided the ants. And I avoided the knights. Yes. Definitely not your knight in shining armour. Right, and watch, make sure you don't kill two enemies with one stamp. That will hurt me. Even though we kill them, it will hurt me. Right. Keep those jumps short, short and sweet. Right, next area. Reading can be a rewarding experience, but only if you read the correct books. Look, children, a new chapter. Scabs. There is a book called Scabs, which featured in the film, and we have lots of collectibles. There we go. We're not far away from getting an extra life. We need 15. Watch out for the bookworms, which killed me. Well, it didn't kill me, but it would have done if my energy was low. Right, we have another enemy. We have this jumping enemy, which follows you. And we have these tiny books. Really small books. Small books with small pages. Now, there's so many books here with interesting names. Um, I could read them, but I've got a lot to do. Gomez has got a lot of work to do, and reading's not one of them. Right, so now I think there's actually a, another token on this level, or screen, should we say, that makes you invincible. I think so. But there's a lot more knights. Right. One is shooting, one is not. Wait for the right time, and I'm going to walk off this book very, very big book. I hope you kill him and I fail miserably. Now this thing will follow you. Let him follow and then jump on him. No, we need that time. This is an incredibly big bookshelf. Now I'm not a big reader, I have to admit I don't read much. But it will take me a lifetime to read a book of that size. Whether they're very, very big books, or Gomez is a very, very small character. But then, if he's small, so is the enemies. So they are probably very, very big books. I don't know how I avoided that. Oh, yeah. Yes, up there is a token. Can't get it from down here. I'm doing well to avoid this. Very, very impressive. Right. Ah, oh, there we go. However, you've had your fun. Now it's my turn to shine. We are invincible once again. I don't mind, we don't earn any points though, it's not a problem. It's not the end of the world. Right, some doors are less obvious than others. There's a secret door. Now we need the help of a bookworm. To get up there. Squish wash. Another door. There's doors all over the place. Secrets! 
we love secrets around here, and we're still invincible. Nice. Yes. And lots of hearts. Nice, nice. Don't just love it when a plan goes together well like that. And the sounds of awards is a rewarding thing. And we're still invincible. Just keep moving. And we have a Fez. There we go. This is where he's going to get a very, very bad headache. However, Uncle Fester loves it. He loves getting headaches. He loves his migraines. But then we are safe up here. There's a lot of enemies he can do to deal with here. Yes, it might give him a headache, but... You know, you've got to look at the advantages and disadvantages. Headache or getting attacked by so many enemies. Go. There's more worms there than there is in the wormery. Right, try pulling down a book for something refreshing. There is one book that allows you to go to another secret area, if I remember what one it is. But again, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to kill, a lot to avoid. Take it one step at a time. Now, if you're over an enemy and he jumps into you, that will also kill him. So there are some bonuses. There are some lifelines. Gun. These small books are difficult because they're so small and so quick. Right, there we go, we found it. Press down and we arrive at this section. So this is actually inside a book. Interesting pages in that book, but then the books in their library are very, very interesting. Now we're back here. So, we're in a good way now. even some books. Well, we're back to square one again. Never mind, there is a shoe. So we can take another hit, even though we've only got one heart left. Lord, how difficult is this? Whew. Now, I've owned this game for a very, very long time. I've only completed it a few times, but this is definitely the most difficult attempt I've ever done, because I'm not used to reading statistics about a game like this. But that's what I do for my videos. I love to be prepared. I love to write lots of stuff down and read it and make it difficult for myself. Ooh. Chase, but I don't know what it is. Is there a knight up there? I guarantee it, yes. With Broomerang Sword. It can attack you after you've killed him. Oh dear. I will die here. I'm so close to the end. Good run, a very, very good run. There they go, we got to the door. Hearts is bad though. Okay, next section. Stand on the engine to get the train moving, but watch out, the track is shocking. Now in the movie, Fester is a long lost brother of Gomez Adams, who was believed to have been lost in the Buda tribe for 25 years. A lone shark called Abigail plans to steal the Adams family fortune with her son Gordon who displays an eerie resemblance to the missing Fester. However, in the end of the film, it turns out that Gordon was actually Fester. Ugh. Avoiding these evil enemies. Ugh. Of course, Fester was suffering from amnesia, which is solved by getting struck in the face by lightning. Right, now of course, in the film, Gomez does have a train set. And he does use it in destructive ways, but now we're riding on the back of it. But we have a lot, a lot of hazards here. These evil spikes. And they're doing a lot more damage than I am boiling them. Every so often you do get a stop sign. That's a little bit of a timeout. Now also, Uncle Fester also appeared in a NES game called Fester's Quest which is ranked the 45th out of 100 greatest NES games of all time. I've never played it before. Okay. Crouch. Well, we didn't make it brilliantly, but our health has regenerated. On we go, boss battle time. And Fester is here. You're reunited with your brother. So, yeah. However, we need your help one more time. He's had a rough day, but we need the help of his head. Because his head is jump on a ball and bounce off a ball. Now they probably got this in one of the episodes, because there was an episode where 
Tressa was actually struck directly to the head with a cannonball. However, he appeared mildly dazed. The cannonball bounced away from his head and bounced off his head. That's probably where they got the idea from. But this enemy is a witch. So we've got to jump on his head and hit the witch that way. So even though he's had a rough day, he's just been really nice with his brother. Still more what to do. Now she'll dive in from time to time and shoot fireballs. At the moment, she's definitely got more health than I have. So hold the fire button down to get the maximum height. So soon, you guys will be reunited with your dancing. The Mamushka. They love doing their Mamushka. They dance the Mamushka. Well, not yet. Two to three. It's like a football score. Keep doing what you're doing, you're doing well, Festa. And of course, go Maze, you're doing well too. Now it's 2 2, it's like a football score. Wait for the right time and hold the fire up and down, to get the maximum height. Now, over on the left side, we're actually safe. Now, I've got here with 13 lives, that's a really good achievement for me. This is probably one of the easiest bosses, because there's quite a lot of areas where we're actually safe, but it can be the most time consuming. Festa has got to be in the right place, at the right time, and so is she. However, I'm winning this battle, they can jump on those fireballs. Boop boop pow! Have some of that. Thank you for your help, Festa. My memory has come back, Gomez, my brother, but Morticia, you must find her. Indeed we shall, we've got a few more to find first. Okay, we rejoin here. Of course, the boss music continues. And we have rewards. Don't you just love rewards? There we go. Three one-ups. Okay, who should we save next? How about Wednesday? Now this one is going to be a little bit more tricky because there's more to it. For starters, we've got to go outside. So, we see the house in a different perspective. Now this house is huge, but it's a lot bigger on the inside. Right. Different music. We have ghosts, we have bats, and they make different sounds when you kill them. There we go, we go through the ground. Okay, here we are. Now this is not Wednesday's level. We'll get there first. Remember, there is a wall, there is a way. Of course, we walk through the wall. We have a one-up. Okay, we have six. You might notice again that my lives have gone back to five. Okay, now this level area has so many enemies to kill. There's going to be more enemies on this section than anywhere else. We have bunnies, we have bats, and evil plants. Plants will shoot at you. However, this is a very good area for getting lots of extra lives. Now, because there's so many enemies here, try and avoid killing multiple enemies with one stamp, because that will definitely hurt you. One of the problems with this game, but it's a fantastic game. Now, I've made a mistake already, actually, um, which I forgot to mention earlier on. Now, the reason why you don't earn additional score when you jump on one enemy to another is if you're holding the fire button down, that will then not get you the additional points. You only do it when you're not holding the fire button down. Now, if you don't hold the fire button down, you'll just stamp them and then just fall down. So, doing it like that, that is how you earn additional points. Okay, now also, and they've made another mistake, four hearts is not the maximum, there's actually a fifth. Now what I'm probably going to do is rescue Wednesday, and then decide what I'm going to do after that. Whether we go for the fifth, before we rescue Nanny, we must have five before we rescue Morticia. We'll see how we do. Okay, we walk through another wall. Now even though we are technically underground, if you go up, that'll take you back to where you started. Right, lots and lots of bunnies. Now, bunnies are cute and cuddly, but they're quite evil in this game. But they don't fire at you. In fact, the only enemy that fires is evil plants. Bats just sort of swoop down and just go off the screen. Okay. All the bunnies here, and there's a water ship down. Right, kill the evil bats. Now, if they fly into you, that will kill them, not me. At this level, you can fly through it, but there are a lot of hidden areas and passageways that you can go if you want to get some additional lives or energy. And of course, 
additional tokens. Tokens do help towards extra lives. 50,000 gets you an extra life, but that's quite difficult to do when I keep having to restart. So that's why I'm making it quite difficult for myself. But there we go. We're getting through it. There's a one up there. You need the help from jumping enemies onto their heads. Jumping on their heads gives you the higher reaches. Now I'm not going to risk killing everything. I'm going to earn more than enough points just doing it this way. Wednesday needs to be rescued. There's another life. We have eight. And we heard a sound that gives us another heart. Right, avoid the skull which is going around in a circular motion. Now I have got statistics for Wednesday as well, but I won't read them just yet because we're not in her area yet. We're going to her favourite place. And she's bound to be there. Right, just took here. Just jumped right into a bunny. But when you jump into them, yes it hurts you, but it does kill them. Okay, now up here are a few more lights. And we have an invincibility token. Have some of that. So once again, Mr. Gomez, you are invincible. Now use this time well. We need the help of these enemies to get to areas we can't reach. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. But then I have been speaking lows today. Alright. Still invincible. Now this area does have water. However, again, it's a choice to go for it or not. I might not bother. I think I might leave it. 11 lives is good. I just want to keep the video length down to a reasonable level. I've gone the wrong way. This is the way you want to go. Where there's a wheel, there's a way. And this is the way to go. And the ticket is confirmed that my weapon is wearing out. And then as soon as it wore out, I took a hit. Okay, we have $44. Secret hearts. Okay. Jump on the moving platform, but avoid the bats. But make sure you crouch at the right time. Up here is the way to go, but if we go down here first and get this extra light. That works out well. But as a result of that, we've got to do it again. There we go. Not professionally done, but we're through. Okay, we're out of there. Now we're in the graveyard. We have werewolves, we have plants. And hit Jamie, hitting more than one with one jump is going to hurt you. You should know this. But then it's quite difficult to not do it. Right, now this area, even though it looks quite small on the outside, it's huge on the inside. Now this place has two entrances, a front door and a back door. So, we've arrived at this end. So, lots of enemies. And this is actually quite a tactical sort of level because it has loads and loads of switches. But this is Wednesday's favourite place, so maybe she's down here. Well, we know for definite, yes she is. Okay, down we go. Now, Wednesday's most notable features are her pale skin and long, dark, braided pink towels. She usually wears a black dress with a white collar, black stockings and black shoes. Okay, lots to kill here. Now, in the 1960s series, she was significantly more sweet, although her favourite hobby is raising spiders, and she's also a ballerina. Her favourite toy is a Marie Antoinette doll, which her brother guillotined at her request. And in one episode, she's shown having several other headless dolls as well. She also paints pictures, including a picture she drew of trees with human faces, and also, she loves to write poems about her favourite pet spider called Homer, not talking about the Simpsons. Okay, Jamie, don't read too much. Right, at the moment we have 13 lives and 4 hearts and 66 dollars. Right, we have more of these, but a much bigger scale, like those ones we had when we were on the back of that train. Right, we have fire and flames going out of the fire. Now this level is tricky, but... Granny's level is much more difficult than this, which has a lot more fire than this. Right, kill the jesters. Kill the small skulls. And we have skulls, which I assume have ears or wings. Possibly wings, because they're floating a lot. Right, now there are sections to jump in and jump down to avoid taking damage. And I'm surprised I didn't take a damage there, because I killed two enemies with one jump. Right, watch out for the fire. Now, Wednesday's first appearance was in New Yorker in 1938. However, she was nameless. 
1964, she was given her name Wednesday Friday Adams. Named by Charles Adams. And she gets her name from a well-known nursing rhyme line, Wednesday Child is Full of Woe. There you go. Right, avoid the fire and avoid spiky gems, crystals, whatever they are. They're dangerous. Hit the switch with your head. Right, a difficult section. This requires quite a lot of pixel-perfect jumping. With the occasional enemy thrown in. And the occasional fire thrown in. With the occasional flame thrown in. I'm making a mistake here. It's never going to burn his feet. So that's one switch done. Now, I'm not going to collect all of the symbols. Because I want to try and stay alive. Otherwise, stuff like that can happen. Or worse, fall into the fire. Alright. <sighs> Really leave it to the edge because it's fire button to jump it makes it difficult. Right, we're not done yet. That was the first one. There's another switch to find. Kill the skulls if you can to make it slightly easier. Okay. As before, pixelated jumping. Not pixelated jumping, falling, and getting burnt. That's fine. Energy's good. There's not many secrets in this level. If there is, I don't know where they are, but I know a few. Other levels have more. Now, this level's not too bad. It does have some different sections, but overall, it's not all that bad. But I'm making a bit of a meal of this. He's got more of a headache than Festant did earlier. Right, we'll edit it a bit down, because that was quite painful. However, as a result of that, I actually lost another heart. We didn't lose any lights, but we do need to get some serious lights back. Right, avoid the skulls. And this level also does have cannonballs, which again you have to use to your advantage by jumping on them to get it hard to reach areas. Right, we have mummies. Now luckily, not many enemies in this game do fire at you. I mean, some levels there aren't any that fire at you. Avoid the chesters. Combos, however, you don't earn additional points if you're holding the fire button down. Alright, skulls. Ugh! Well, to avoid that and that! Woo! My lord. Still got more sissies to read though, Jamie. <laughs> right, in the 1991 film, she is depicted closer to the original cartoons. She shows sadistic tendencies and a dark personality and is revealed... Whoa! Ugh! Killed that while crouching. She's revealed to have a deep interest in the Bermuda Triangle and an admiration for the ancestor who was burnt as a witch in 1706. Oh dear. Leave it dangerously. He has one half and then so do I, but he's close to death. Right, up there is another fez. A fez with a slight helicopter twist. I love the animation to Gomez when he's actually standing still. Quite comical. You can kill enemies like this. Best way is to let them go up to your level. As long as you're above them. Right, we have a shoe. Well, hopefully he's got two shoes on. So now we're flying with extra speed. Lots and lots of skeletons. Let's wait patiently and kill them one at a time. Rather than go for multi kill and get them hit and hurt. Right, another skull. And we have enemies with balloons. Fair play to them. Clowns. I do know a few people that really, really dislike clowns. Jamie, how did you avoid that? Again, more enemies that don't fire at you. Right, here we go. Right, it's a secret over here, if I remember rightly. We've got to hit another button. This has more difficult jumping sections. Which, if it takes too long, I'll edit it down. It's difficult. What the hell with that slide? Oh, 
while I've done it. But I think I can zoom up the shoe, which makes it more difficult. It's a faster. Right, okay. Down we go. Okay, maybe one more chance. I'm always gonna run out of enemies. Right, that was difficult to do. Right. Hit the button. It's quite easy to do if you've got that extra shoe. So I've used pixelated jumps with a really fast shoe. And there's another one. So there you go, there's your other, there's your other one. They've got one on both feet. Right, we have cannonballs again. Use them wisely. But these ones are different colours. Right, there's a heart there. That's desperately what Gomez needs. He's got shoes. Not a lot of energy. I lost it straight away. No, I didn't. I lost my shoes. But then they were causing a little bit of difficulty for him. And for me. Right. Let's get up there. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Right. Up there is another heart. Again, I very much like that right now. So now we're going bullet time. Get it, but it's quite risky to go and get it, but we'll get it because I need it. But sometimes getting it is the easy bit, it's getting back which is the worst thing. You spend all that time getting it, then you lose it trying to get back. Well, there we go. <laughs> a bit like that, really. I'll just carry it on, we've been safer. Alright. Now, Wednesday it was played by actress Christina Ricci. We went on to play and star in Casper, Ice Storm, Super Hollow, and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I don't know if she does many films now. I'm not sure. Right, this one is slightly different because we need to crouch. We need a helping hand. We need to be pushed by a block. Avoid the fire. Now, this is quite a difficult playthrough, actually. I'm sort of hanging in there with the real basic weapons and basic hearts, should we say. Right. But this level is very, very tactical. Now, usually, when I play this game, it's usually... This is probably one of the first levels I usually do. But most of the times, I usually get here with three hearts, not four. But you can get five hearts. So I was wrong earlier when I mentioned it. Right, Jester's. Right, over here is a cannon. So far this way... Good. Don't do this in real life, children. Gomez is a trained professional. He's done this before. I haven't completed it before. Right, more fire. Hmm. Another button, another deadly jump. Ugh, which killed me. Okay, we're back again. Now that Jester came back from the dead. 13 lights, and another button pressed. With a head. Okay. Fire, more jesters, more work. Another button. More buttons in this area, and there's my, my TV remote. Alright. Uh, at least it's Sky Remote. Good luck in that, Jamie, you don't have Sky. Right. Heart. Not the heart of darkness. That's another game. Won't play on my channel. <laughs> right, uh, again, we need the help of a cannonball. Now where? Can I actually get lost on this level? Uh... Made a bit of a meal of that. Again, editing was required. This game is long enough. And that sort of stuff involved. It's going to make the video too long. Right, kill another jester. We're not far away. Okay. Right, heart. Do need that. Tokens, how are we doing? 18. I need even more now. With the help from a mummy. Without danger there. 
I'm feeling dangerous today. Right, this bit is difficult because there's not a lot of time to react here. Gotta get up there very quick. Oh, another death. Okay, we're back here again. We have four hearts. Alright. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from your errors. And learn quickly. I'm so glad this game doesn't have time limits. The game is hard enough. Super difficult. But it's doable and it's very, very enjoyable. Alright, we're not far away. Now, this boss isn't too bad. On the move, Jamie. Gomez. Adams. Jester. Oh my lord, Jamie. Woo! Button. Bomb. Cannonball. Heart. Four. Boss. On we go. There is Wednesday. Full name Wednesday Friday Adams. Now, this one is not too bad at all. out of his attacks. As long as you're directly below him, you should be fairly safe. But when you get up there, you've got to be quite quick. But again, when you take a hit, when he takes a hit, he'll flash. During this section, it cannot be harmed. Alright, there we go. 12 lives, I'm fairly happy with that. Now, Wednesday does look quite confused down there, but then look how small she is, the, the sec section she is in. A doll to play with, a headless doll. Here we go. Hello, father. Thank you for rescuing me. But honestly, I was having so much fun. We didn't look it. You look very, very bored, actually. But there we go. Access code VGS Sky. How spooky is that? Okay, Wednesday has gone. And when I recorded this, it's actually Sunday. One up, one up, and one up. There we go. However, we're not done yet. We'll get out of here now. So, there was a twist to this tail. Now, should we go out the front door? Or should we go out the back door? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Kill the clown. Kill the bunny. One, two, and three. There we go. So now we're on the other end. I have to admit, this is probably the most difficult end. Because now we have pumpkins, as well as plants. Bunnies, werewolves, now these pumpkins will shoot at you, they'll drop fire. And when it lands on the ground, it sets for a while. Again, lots and lots of enemies. Lots and lots of tombstones. Yes! What being on a pogo stick. Werewolves normally get killed by a silver bullet. Not here. Gomez is jumping. Feet must be absolutely killing him. Do a lot of damage with feet, but in so many games, that is the case. There we go. Okay, because I left that level different to the way I entered it, this actually put me here. This actually worked to my advantage because this level is the one we want to gain that fifth and final part. However, this is a very, very difficult level. Of all the levels I've done in this game, this is probably the one I've done the least amount of times. However, this level is very, very similar to the Morticia level. Which is the final level. Right, we have birds, we have green goblins, not the ones from Spider-Man, and birds, and lots of spikes. Now luckily these platforms are here to avoid us falling into spikes. Okay, Gomez is the husband of Morticia. He's a crafty schemer, but also a jolly man in his own way. Although sometimes misguided, sentimental, and often optimistic. He is full of full enthusiasm for his dreadful plots. Now, Tim Curry played him in the Adams Family Reunion. In the Adams Family cartoons and television shows, Gomez wore a necktie to his chalk striped suit. Now, in the film, Gomez wore a bow tie and wears a wide variety of extravagant clothing. He does indeed. Right. We've got points for that. Now, these have spikes on top and bottom on some cases, and you've got to jump through it. So you've got a well-timed, perfect height sort of jump situation going on. Now, Gomez Adams spends $1,000 a month alone and on cigars. He's a professional juggler and a knife thrower. 
which he proved in that film, when he danced the Mamushka, which involved juggling with knights. And so did Festa, he's very good as well. Right, making good progress, we have three hearts, 16 lives and 42 dollars. And a part of the pear tree. Now down here, it looks very much like secret territory to me. There we go! Lots and lots of extra points there. Lots of tokens. Avoid exploding tomato. Okay, green goblin. Now Gomez was played by Raw Julia. Unfortunately, he died at the age of 54 of stomach cancer on October 24th, 1994. However, in early 1994, despite his poor health, Raw continued and planned to play M. Bison in Street Fighter, which he did, which was filmed in Australia. Okay. $1,000 a month on cigars. That is a lot. But he's the only one that smoked. Right. Now, also... Your character does have the ability to climb up and down ropes. This is a nice thing to the game, however it's quite difficult to jump off the ropes, especially when there's lots of enemies nearby or spikes. Now this area does tend to have spikes on the edges as well as top and bottom of the screen. But you don't want to be surrounded by lots and lots of evil flies. Multicolour flies. Now this level is quite tricky. Because there is a way we can go the wrong way. If you go the wrong way, it's going to take you back to the house. We want to try and get that life. Or should we say extended heart? That fifth heart. Fifth and final heart. Now to do that, you'll get to the end of this section. Now at the end of this section is another boss. And that boss is three centipedes. You'll kill all three of them to get those extended hearts. Right, up there is a heart, which is going to replenish one of them anyway. Five is the maximum, even though I got it wrong earlier on in the video. Make sure you take the right door. Birds. Hitting those, then you can make them angry birds. See what I did there? Well, that's a different game. Avoid the green goblin. I mean, good time jumps. And I failed miserably. Sometimes we do need enemies to get areas we can't reach. Sometimes the enemies respawn, and sometimes they don't. So make sure you pick the what times wisely. My like, health is bad. It's atrocious. Right. Spiders. Some spiders are blue, some spiders are red. But they, don't, they both die with a single hit. Jump through there, don't mistime it. That could be a very, very painful experience with Mr. Gomez. More green goblins. Nice and steady, Jamie. Nice and steady. 60 lives. What the maximum hearts. Especially for the mortitious level, it's the most difficult. However, we've still got to rescue Nanny. Go for the door. Okay, there was a death there, which is no surprise. There's so many birds here. There's more birds here than there's in the pet shop. And if you get the occasional plants, and of course plants fire at you, they can jump on their bullets. The best thing to do, if it's doable, is kill them. It's never really an easy task. There's not really a lot of room to move because there's so many birds. And they do shoot quite often, those plants. We need weed kill, that's what we need. Right, now you can kill the enemies while being on the ropes. Let's do that. But it's quite difficult to jump off of this rope and grab another. And the last level has loads of these. And we've got spikes on the sides, which makes it even more difficult to jump off a rope and avoid a bird in a very, very confined space. There's not a lot of room to move. Not a lot of room to kill. Right, we're nearly there. I'll just hit a blue spider. Right, this is the key. This is the important bit. Because this section is where we have the door we need to go into. Make sure you pick the correct door. Otherwise, it'll take us back to the area we don't want to go. To do all this and not be rewarded with another heart will be devastating. But over here is a button. We hit the button and we trace our steps. 
need to fly. You need to fly to reach high. There you go. Hit the button and retrace our steps. Now, there's enemies there with a spike in their helmet, on the tip of their helmet. Now, if you just shove this knife in the drawer, that is not going to be killable. Right. Retrace our steps. Collect the tokens. Avoid those unkillable enemies. Right, in we go. This is the way we need to go. Right, now we have red spiders. Avoid exploding tomatoes. Now that is the door we want. We've got to get up there, which is a fly. Bingo! That's a different game. That'd be a full house. Right, door is open. Right. Okay, 15 lives, 86 tokens, and 3 hearts. It's not good enough. I want five hearts. And that'd be four more than I have. Right, more tokens, but they're locked behind closed doors. So I'm not gonna risk it for a biscuit. I'm sure there's a button somewhere. Rule number one, stay alive. That is my rule. It's a heart. There's a fly. Got a fly. Grab the heart. Jump on the platform. And make it safely. Right, that confused me. Right, we have 94. We're very, very close to another life. It brings us up to 16. Another hit. Uh, now, the trouble is, do I hit that button or not? We'll find out soon enough. Kill one of those. Right. Uh, fly. Mind you, the spider would normally kill the fly in real life. Like the world's worst spider for killing irritating flies. Those flies are nearly, nearly enough the same size as those buddy rabbits. Right, health is bad. Right, got some difficult jumps. This is really, again, testing his limit. Right, here we go. The flies are irritating, but sometimes they can be a the lifesaver. Hit and I'm dead. Oh, that was close. Do you think I'll make that? Right, this is difficult. Oh! My lord, how lucky was that, Gomez? Uh, do we need a fly here? I think we might well do. So just wait for it to go around the loop if he does. Okay, boss time. I had a few deaths there, which I'll edit out. Right, even though there's only two centipedes on the screen, and they'll all arrive on the scene. Right, need to hit anyone. Hitting any of them will take hits for all three of them. Now, when they flash, like I said with those other boss battles, you are safe. Now, there is a safe point on this left side. So it's three against one. I don't like those odds, but I love the reward. Boom, boom, pow! We gain another half power. Access code B69 K and an and symbol. Okay, next on the agenda, time to rescue Nanny. Let's go. Okay, we arrive at familiar territory. We have a choice of boots. Left if you want to go cold. Right if you want to go hot. Avoid the evil chef. Hit the button. Stove can be switched off if you find the switch. We have different music, but for a short period of time. We have a few new enemies and a few returning ones. We have these evil chefs with evil cutting blades. We have kettles of different colours and also get the occasional mugs going around in circles. Fair play to them, how are they going to be feeling very dizzy off the bat? Now this is the stove. The stove is currently switched on and still shut. Only a fool will go in that if it's turned on. So we'll find the switch and turn it off first. But first we're going to go and find some secrets. We go through the far right wall. Pick up the collect balls and avoid the goldfish bowl with werewolf legs. And that you don't hear every day, unless you're actually that person. Now you might have noticed that my lives have once again dropped. Because I made more mistakes trying to beat statistics. Right, now when you come out of a secret, enemies you've killed will then be spawned. They're back with a vengeance. But more opportunities to get more points. Now over here is a switch, but there's also another secret. 
Now hit the switch after you've done the secret. Sometimes we kind of those areas. Switches will then reset. Right, more enemies. Got up health back. Goldfish bowls in confined spaces. We need a tiny tap jump. Just tap the button, don't hold it down. Small jump does that. Right, full energy and six lives. And 37 tokens. Enemies are once again replenished. Now I've learned something else today. Which makes my early statistic wrong. Now when you jump on two enemies at once and you take damage, that only happens if you're holding the fire button down. If you're not holding the button bu fire button down, it doesn't harm you. So what I said earlier was wrong. Here's the stove. It's now turned off. So children, don't try this at home. Do not go into your stove. Okay, now we're inside the stove. Granny is here, guarded by baddies that are too hot to touch. There's going to be no killing here. The only bit we're going to kill down here is me. Right, because these enemies are on fire. You can't kill an enemy on fire. How do we make a good member of the Fantastic Four? Okay. Lots to see, lots to do, lots to avoid. Right, don't get torched with an ear hole. Jump down here, hit the button, and go through the door. Now, Grandma Adams first appeared in New York in 1938, created by Charles Adams. She's an aged witch who makes potions and spells, and dabbles in fortune telling and knife throwing. Now, fire down here does fantastic things. Moves around, bounces up and down, goes round in circular motions, and sets people on fire. Now, you can't kill an enemy that's on fire. All you do is just walk backwards and forwards, and that's all you need to do, because they can't be killed. They are invincible. Right, okay. Lots to do. Now, we're going to end this level with a tan, or maybe even a torched moustache. Or both. But hopefully we'll rescue Nanny. Right, there's a button that says on. Leave it on. Okay. What this lot? Bouncing fire and flamethrowers. Now some of these bouncing balls, you have to go under or over. I think over is probably best, but sometimes if it's a confined space, it's probably best to go under it. Right, now this one, hit the button and turn it off. That turns a door off. At the moment, hearts are good. So I'll leave that one there just in case I get killed by a guy that's had a really, really hot mean curry last night. Okay. Fire. Fire comes all shapes and sizes. That's probably my second favourite level of this game. But I don't think I've ever got here before with five hearts. However, the most difficult level is still to do. Morticia's level. Now, she is the grandmother of Adam's children, Pugsy and Wednesday, although her relationship with the other family members is less consistent. Right, okay, down we go. Avoid the flames. Hit the button, that opens up the platform beneath you, but it does provide you with platforms either side to get to high grounds. Make a mistake, I'm gonna fall down and hit a fiery theme. Little pixelated jumps, there we go, up we go, up we go. And then you also get the occasional lava. And that's definitely too hot to touch as well. Crouch, I wanted to, otherwise we're gonna lose our hair. Keep low. We're open the right time. Crouch. Get out of there. Alright. So far so good. Great level. Really, really good fun. Now, one of the good things about this game is you can do the levels in any order you like. I think every time I play this game, I always do it in a different order. I've never got here with five hearts. But you definitely want five hearts for the final level. And that is after this one. Who's got a lot to do? Okay, more enemies recovering from their hot curry. Right, hit the button, but I'll open up the platform beneath you. Down here, we're safe. Safe ish. There we go. Safe, safe, safe while crouching. Right, we have fire. Now, blocks will come in and out of the fire, or lava. That block is definitely going to be too hot to touch. Now, a lot of these old school platformers, so many of them have levels that are ice and levels that are fire. I don't know what's worse, being hot or cold. I hate both of them. Right, wait patiently, wait for the block to arrive on the scene. If you keep jumping, it won't slide. Now, even though this is a very, very hot area, he does also slide. Right, this is the waiting game now. A lot going on in a very, very short, confined space. There we go. Going well, going good. Right, another heart down there. How are we going to get it? Because nearby is also another life. Now, this level doesn't have many secrets. 
first we're going to hit the button to get access to it. So keep walking and we gain an extra life. Hit the button again to deactivate the door. It's probably best to go round there actually. Go with the flow. Avoid the fire in the shape of the star. However, I would not be a star if I hit that one. Right. So much going on. Right, there's a platform with bouncing fireballs. Hit the button and that opens up another door and there's also another secret here. Keep walking. I love the sounds of rewards. There we go. I missed one, but I'll leave it, I'll leave it, I'll leave it. Now Adams describes Ben Ma in the 1963 character as a disrespectful old hag and foolishly good matured, weak character who is easily led. Uh, right, avoid the fire, avoid the lava. Now Grandma was played by Judith Molina, who suddenly passed away at the age of 88 on April the 10th, 2015. Carol Kane played the character in the sequel. I have to admit, I wasn't blown away by the sequel. It was okay, but not great. The first one was much better, but that's my own personal opinion, of course. That was gonna hurt. That did hurt. But most set Gomez on fire. That would definitely ruin his blue stripy suit. Right. Keep moving. Keep moving. Well, in this case, keep moving and sliding, and then taking a hit. Right, secret, go through here, once again we go through the wall. Hearts, we've got three hearts and forty dollars. We're gonna change that right now. But down here is another fiery friend. I just managed to avoid by the skin of Gomez's teeth. On we go. Oh. Now in Charles Adams original, the character was referred to as Grandma Frump. Therefore making her Morticia's mother. For the TV series and the movie, she was named Eudora Adams. Right. Her relation to the family is reconned as she became Gomez and Festa's mother. Of course, Gomez and Festa are brothers. Who danced to Babushka. Right, another fiery fiend. Blah. It's the only enemy you can't kill. Whether you jump on him or not and take a hit, You'll take a hit, but they'll stay alive. And they'll be proud of that. Right, more blocks. Whoa! Wee! I forgot about that. Now, unfortunately, there is a different gap in between each of these blocks. So time it well! That's, that's, that's really bad enemy placement. Right, two hearts. Not a lot of secrets here. Not a lot of extra lives here. A lot of fire here. Now I did actually do some more research in this game. I found out a little bit more about some other versions. I didn't realise that in other versions, Gomez does have the ability to throw a weapon. He can pick up golf balls in other versions and throw them at the enemy. I have no idea. It's news to me. Now this is the only version I've played. Now being a big C64 fan, I must try that one out as well. But I don't think it's going to be as good as this. It's probably going to be so different. I did say that other versions have different levels. Oh, these platforms drop. Now, reviews are mixed for the Amiga and the SNES versions. Recent scores up to 95%. NES and Game Boy were significantly lower. Right, another Gobby de Gook level. Right, so we need to jump on that block, go with the flow, crouch. Hit the switch, jump back on it, and then boom, boom, pow. But make sure we crouch. Festa likes headaches, but Gomez doesn't. Hit the button. Then we go round again. Enjoyed it so much, go round for another go. Again, wait patiently. And he is. Even though he's tapping his foot from time to time, and putting his hands in his pockets. He's a very, very comical guy. Very comical character. Right, more flamethrowers. We'll be torching the ear hole. Now these guys, looks like they don't have any arms. I mean, things are bad, alright. Anyway, but, you know, being fired up and armless, that's not nice, right? Right, more hazards. Hazards that are not fireproof. 
So either Pugsy's been here, or Bowser's been here, or the ultimate combination have been here to create this amazing thing, which is just causing problems. That's the only enemy in this level that doesn't have fire. It's Blades. Now that flashing square up there will tell you where there's a hazard, even though they're fairly obvious. Alright, again, wait for the right time. Bad timing could result in a sunburn, a fireburn, a scorch, a mark, a scar. Right, we have a hat. A hat with a helicopter. Right, you currently have something in common with Inspector Gadget, because Inspector Gadget also has a hat that has a, a helicopter in it. His doesn't run out, this one does, so keep moving. This also gives you a lot more speed. And up here, we break some few blocks and we get some hearts. Maximum hearts. Now, I'm actually really, really dreading this final level. It is, without a shadow of a doubt, the most difficult, which you expect for a final level of a game like this. I've only completed this game a couple of times. This has been the most difficult one I've done. Right, collect them or not. The choice is yours. I'm going to go and take a risk. And avoid it. Let's bring the length of this video down. Seven lives is okay. It's not brilliant, it's okay. It would be so much better if it didn't make so many mistakes in statistic reading. I'd have loads of lives right now. Right, okay. Uh, no hat, keep topping it up, that way it doesn't run out. Go oh, Mears, you should have bought some sunblock. Oof. There we go. Not far away. Now the boss on this level is a dragon. Quite a difficult uh, uh, boss actually. Um, now it goes in and out of fire. We've got to hit him on the head, and the head only. His body is spiky. Don't worry, Nanny, we'll rescue you very, very soon. Now, when you hit that switch, it'll start to rain men. Fiery men around here. There's one, and there's another. Wait for him to drop, and then go for it. Avoid the bouncing fireball. Crouch. Another button. Is it with your head? You have one serious headache. So now we have a platform. Run on the platform and we are safe. Safe for the dangers. For now, anyway. Double trouble. Right, there's a button up there. Now, if you time it right, you can actually trap these two dudes in with those bouncing fireballs. There you go. Locked you away. You're in prison. I'm not. I'm free. Whoa. Right, making good progress. 75 collectibles, 7 lives, and 4 energy. Wow! Right, these drop. And they burn. And they hurt. Uh, uh, keep jumping, Jamie. Brilliant game, this. Absolutely fantastic. Must play more versions. Find out how much these are different between versions. Again, crouch. Oh, actually, that was right, Jamie. Okay, go. Not many seekers at all. Not many life-changing situations. Right, got another heart. Get another block. Right, jump off of it. Crouch. It then goes over your head. Then we jump back on it. A very unusual lift. But it is a lift in a very different, unusual situation. Now, Granny is a very good, very, very good cook. However, a little bit different to the food you get at your local restaurant. She's been captured in the place where she cooks these unusual foods. Now the family is going to be very, very hungry after this crazy day. So we need to rescue her. They're going to be quite hungry after this. Even though Gomez has done all the work. I right, hit that button and it switches these platforms across. Jamie taking too many hits. I think this is boss battle territory. Okay, boss battle. Believe it or not, I died there, but then I only had one heart. Okay, so there, we, there she is, locked away in the smallest prison ever. 
She must be absolutely bored in there. Right, we've got to hit the dragon in the face. Quite a few times, but face only. Reasons I don't really need to explain. He has a spiky body. Now use the, the short jumping technique. That way we don't jump over his head and hit a spiky body. This one can be a little bit time consuming. But it's one of the most difficult ones in my opinion. Don't worry, Nanny, you'll be safe in a moment. Three bars left. I have full energy. Close to finishing this game. You're in the middle. Yeah, why not? Spice it up a little bit. In fact, stick to the original plan. You didn't take any hits that way. One more hit and you're a dead dragon. There we go. What took you so long, Gomez? I was becoming very comfortable. Sorry about that. There we go. Access code BLR11. Okay, once again, we're rewarded with some extra lights. Three is the magic number. There we go. Nine lights remaining. Okay, we have one more location to go. The final location. Let's head to this final door. Okay, there we go. There is Lurch playing the piano. Lurch, whose first name is unknown, first appeared in 1938, played by Ted Cassidy in the TV series. With the catchphrase, Rang? Lurch is often seen in company in the rest of the family, sometimes coming in a paper duster. In a couple of illustrations, the family are seen decorating Lurch like a Christmas tree. Played by Carol Stryken in the films, Lurch is six foot, nine inches tall, shambling, gloomy butler. And the door is open. On we go. Bingo. Okay, arrive at Mortician's stage. This is the final level, and this level is difficult. Start the game off, level off as a maze. Now if you go the wrong way at any point in this level, you'll go back to the start. Find you see a different screen, you go through a door, you'll know you're going in the right direction. Right, watch out for the spikes. Hit the A. Through this maze of chains, the family fortune awaits. Right, hit the button. Now when you go back to the start, you don't lose energy or points or lives. If you do go back to the start of the screen, we entered. So make sure you do it in the right order. Right, grab the very, very small chain and drop down through the spikes. And we arrive in water. First appearance of this video. There are other areas where you can also swim. But this is the first appearance here. Now, as expected, being in the water, you're going to move a lot slowly. It's not his fault. But you can kill enemies in this way. Same way as you would if you're jumping, flying. You just jump on their heads. This is a bit slower. But even in water, you could be a killing machine, Gomez. Kill the evil prana fish. And luckily, there's no air bar or anything like that. Go for the door. So, so far, so good. We're seeing different places, which is saying we're going the right way. Right, jump through those spikes. And we hit the button. It says off. And then we trace our climbing steps. Jump back through, and go to another door. And then get empowered for the brain. Twice. <laughs> He's in a rough day, Jamie. Don't make it even rougher. Here we go. Avoid the pit. Okay. Now, Morticia first appeared in Charles Adams' newspaper cartoons as a stirred aloft matriarch of the family. Named in 1930, later in 1964, Charles Adams gave her name, which was inspired by Mortician. Okay, we can't have a level without spikes now, can we? Grab the chains. Okay. Avoid these spikes. Loads of spikes. If you want to fall down there, you go back to the start. Again, we're going the right way because we're seeing something different. Lots and lots of collectibles. More. I hope so. There we go. Choice of doors. Left is more rewarding. And we've got to find the blocks first. There we go. On we go. Now, according to Wednesday, Morticia applies baking powder to her face instead of makeup. She enjoys cutting buds off of roses, which she discards. She likes cutting paper dolls with free heads and making sweaters with free arms. 
Her personal pet is Cleopatra, a carnivorous plant called an African strangler. Right, we're going the right way because we're seeing different areas. We have skulls and we have rolling heads. And a few new ones. We have birds and bouncing bogeys. You'll be killed by bouncing bogeys. Right, there are spikes at the top of the screen, but these ones don't harm you. So, ocean will be a little bit more nicer this time. Now, this area has very, very little in terms of secrets. So, not a lot of chances to get extra lives or hearts. Right, but this one is quite high, so we might have to go underneath bogey. There we go, underneath the bouncing bogey. Right, at the moment, we have $87 and 10 lives and 4 hearts. And getting here with less than 5 is an extremely difficult task. Now, this level contains enemies from all the other levels, including these, which says BOOM on the side, which is a word I say quite a lot in my videos. Right, this is a rolling head. However, we've got shoes. We can run a lot faster. We can run like Little Christie. Okay, rolling heads. Kill the birds. Are they birds or bats? Right, through the door. Now, if you die at any point, you restart at the last door you went through. Now, Morticia played by Angelica Houston. She also appeared in the sequel and was also the main witch in Roll Dolls The Witches. Okay. Now, Morticia is described as a witch which is with slim and extremely pale skin and long flowing black hair. So, we need to rescue her. That would make Gomez very, very happy. Would it make her happy? Who knows? Because usually when Gomez asks her if she's unhappy, she says yes completely. Right, lots and lots of evil enemies here. However, they don't shoot at you. So that's a really marvellous thing. But take it one step at a time and try not to get hit. More water. Water is a warning at times because there's plenty more down here. 92. We're close to another life and close to another heart. Which is fantastic. I need one more to max it out. More bombs, more fire, more skulls. Deadly combo. And more spikes. And a testing jump for Mr. Gomez. And if you time it right, you can get up the top there. And avoid the swinging mace. Where did that bat go? There we go. It's a shortcut to this secret door. Another rolling head, but we have rewards here. That's really rewarding. Off we go. Now she is the real head of the family. Low voice, incisive and subtle. Smiles are rare, ruin beauty. Contemptuous and original with fierce family loyalty. Even in disposition, muted witty, sometimes deadly given to low keyed Rhapsodies about her garden of deadly nightshade, hen brain, and dwarf's hair. That was actually quite difficult to read. Right. Going well. We're not done yet, though. We have lots of boom boom pals going on here. Avoid those. They do play a big part later on. Because we need the cannonballs to get areas we can't reach. Right, this also has platforms that fall when you stand on them. Right, the return of these. Bowser and Pugsy will be impressed. Even though Bowser's ones were not made of blades. Right, another door. Safe and sound. Going well. We have 11 lights. Lots and lots of birds. Again, they don't fire at you. They're doing so much meaner. There's not many enemies in this game that shoot. Right, another mace. Another bit. How many... Right. So pick your time wisely and crouch and avoid getting hit in the head of a mace. Okay. Your bats. Green and brown. Now, I've only ever done this level twice. But it's been a while since I've done it. Right, we have a switch. Use the switch, avoid the swinging maze, and open up the floor. There's a heart if you're brave enough to do it. Let's do that. Woo. 
Right, go with the platform. It's probably going to end in hurting. Yes, I messed that right up. Grab the chain. These chains remind me of Hellraiser. Oh my lord, run, run, run. Down here is a secret. Requires more swimming. It's going to make his suit very, very wet. There are some rewarding, some, some rewarding power-ups down here. More fish. Different kind of fish. Now, I've made quite a lot of mistakes in this video, but because this game is so long, a lot of them had to leave, leave in. This has been a very, very difficult video. Enjoyable, but, but, but tough. Right, Jamie, don't get hit by fish. There is one health rack. There we go. We've got another slow swim up to the surface. There's a door. There we go. Okay, we had our first death. That was a good run, though. Right, more skulls. Lots of skulls appear here. Use these enemies wisely to get areas you can't reach. Right, birds and cannonballs. Actually, it looks like the cannon is actually shooting at the bird. Oh, swimming mace. Ugh. Now, this one, I don't know how you get past this. I just don't know if you can get through, get through that one. So, that's two hits already. Kill the bird. A lot of these platforms do fall beneath you. And once they fall, they don't replenish. They don't respawn. Kill lots of bouncing bogey. That's gonna hurt. Lord. Right, now we have these. They shoot rocks. The advantage is, though, is you can hit them behind you're above them. Like a miniature volcano. Right, these fall. There we go, checkpoint reached. Okay, another death. Okay. More green bats. When you're jumping on them and killing multiple, make sure you're not holding the fire button down, which is what I learned earlier on today. Quite an important thing, actually. I'm going to kill all of you. Right, here the water we go. Have you got the swimming trunks on, Gomez? Really get out of the water. Let's go at some speed. Knock him out, get hit by that. Right, falling platforms, they do not replenish. They do not return. If they don't return, you've got to jump into the spikes and take the damage. Oh, right, rock. You can jump on them though. Sometimes you can get quite lucky. Lucky to get out of this one. My lord! Door! Checkpoint! Full health! Okay, another death to the collection. Not a nice collection. Avoid the rolling head. Kill the birds. Right, save your energy. Kill the bogeys. If it's killable, kill it. But only if it's easy accessible. Alright, kill. More booms. I need a good time jump here. Just think of it as Pugsley's level. Okay, jump and jump. Jump and kill. Right, show some fruits. Kill the skulls. Kill the bird. Right, another boom. Boom, have some of that. And again. Not professionally done, Jamie. Oh dear. Right, hearts. Plenty of them, but they're not easy to get. But I'm going to try. One, two. Try and land back on the platform. Okay. Uh, go! Go. Bats, green bats. Checkpoint. Okay, we arrive at the boat. 
This is the boat that appeared in the film, which Gomez and Festa were using to get to the vault. To get to Adam's fortune, which is what's trying to be stolen in this game and, of course, in the film. Now, when he was using this boat, Gomez was singing. I'm not singing here. I don't have a singer's voice. But it's never going to be an easy ride because there's enemies all over the place. Skulls, bats, and if you land in the water, fish. But if you land in the water, it's going to be quite difficult to get back onto the boat because you'll be swimming a lot slower than the boat is moving. And we get birds, and of course we get extended hazards. Blades. Now they didn't appear in the film. Bats here, there's a Batman movie. It's going well though. Oh my lord. We're there. My feet are firmly on the ground. Checkpoint. Right, in we go. Final phase. However, I've got a little bit more rewards first. Now these are very, very big points. Right, we have a shoe. We have a life, full energy. And tokens. We are running like the running man. Go, go, go. Now this last boss is quite tricky. But with five hearts, Six lives should be fine. I hope. A hard day at work, this has. Let's go. Okay, final boss time. There is Gomez's wife. There is Morticia. Waiting for a knight in shine armor to save the day. Right, now he'll jump up and down. Every time he does, hammers will fall. The hammers that we use in an auction. Now it's quite difficult, but you can go up the top and continue to avoid these hammers. And you've got to hit him on the head. However, you don't get a lot of time to do it. And when he jumps down, you've only got enough time to hit him once. Twice if you're extremely lucky. Now avoiding these hammers low down is much easier than doing it up there. So jump on his head and then jump out of the way. Now this is the only boss in this game that has full energy. At the moment, I've got full energy. Quick. Be quick, we'll be dead. Good start. What's a good start? I was looking at his energy and took my eye off the, the hammers. There we go. Now, I've only ever completed this game twice, but that was a very, very long time ago. Switch from side to side. I'm taking hits, so is he. It's three all. I'm going to the wire. It always does more with those games. That skidding really doesn't do me any favours. Be quick. Right, now I'm winning. Jump out the way. Every time he jumps. Golden hammers fall from the ceiling. Quite a lot of them. There we go. I'm winning now. Five lives and three hearts. Cannot argue with that. Morticia is just waiting patiently. Waiting for the job to be finished. There we go. Took a hit, but not as many as he did. There we go. Well done, my darling. You have saved the family fortune and Festa has returned to the fold. There we go, done it! Fantastic! Fantastic! Oh Gomez, I remember two of, of those simply wonderful dark and devious and nooks and crannies. Unhappy darling? Yes, completely. And that's a good thing. Cue the farmer's display! Woohoo! That was an extremely difficult level. Five hearts helped massively with that. And there is Thing! I haven't even mentioned much of you today, but there we go! We go into the box. I've got so much paperwork, you have no idea how much writing down I did. So I actually buried my box. It got so bad at one point, I'd actually run out of paper, 
So I went for the back end of a Fosses packet. There we go. Right, game design graphics, Warren Lancashire. This is Gomez's final stroll. A digital graphics by Simon Butler. Great artwork. Music and sound effects by Jonathan Dunn. I do know a few people who can draw like that. That was tough. That was a really tough playthrough. Playtesting by Gareth Betts. That was the third time I completed it. It was a very, very long time I completed it last time. Playtesting by Timothy Welsh. Joint testing by Gregory Ben Joan Johnson. I spoke so much today. Unbelievable amounts. Scar Connector and Five Amp Fuse by Paul Street. Nearly finished. Photographs by Jennifer Gillespie. Development managed by Gary Crazy. Have some of that! That's the end of the game, people! Go Bears, your work is done! And there we go, that's the end of the game, people! And that's the end of my video. That is Adam's Family, a tremendous game. Copyright 1992 by Ocean. And it's Jamie for all this games. Please like, please comment, please share, and please do subscribe and share on the Facebook fan page, on Instagram, or on Twitch. Just type in all these games, you find it fairly easy. Please remember to hit the bell icon, that will notify you in the videos of local fan tape. If you want to do these sort of videos, and you have a big making and live streams on Friday night, give your time, 8 o'clock, it's highlight my week. Till next time, take it easy. Ciao, bye, see ya. It's a bird. And we've got to try and defeat this bird, and when you do, you get a hell. It's a platform game based on the 1991 movie of the same name. <coughs> Okay, The Adams Family is a platform game based on a 1991 movie of the same name, released by Ocean o Okay, time to say... The first line, I messed it up. Right. Yeah, <laughs> okay, as a result of that last level having an entrance and an outrance, Now because that last level had a, a back door and a front door, I entered the way I left out. Another day. Yeah. Okay, we're back to familiar territory. Now you get a choice of groups. Left to go cold, right to... Okay, back to familiar territory. Now this area has a... a, a <laughs> okay, we're back to familiar territory. Now this place gives you a choice of routes. Left to go cold, right... <laughs> Excuse me, I'm trying to do a long play. Do you mind? So many of these platform games have a fiery level and a hot level. Very well known. Do you know what? I've died so many times in this section. This is one I've memorised.